Hey, hey folks, Mark Norman here. Why don't you go subscribe to Be Astray? Get on it, folks. Go subscribe. Queef it up. I'm gay. Hey, everybody. It's me, Bela Stray. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be interviewing Mark Norman. How are you doing today, Mark? Hey, couldn't be better. A little hungover, a little gay, sitting in a park in New Orleans. Take it all in. That is awesome. You're in New Orleans right now. Are you doing comedy over there? I am. I'm doing some outdoor shows and uh, seeing the folks, hopefully kill a grandma and uh, yeah, make the most of it. Sounds like a good time. And why would you say you started comedy? Woo, I just always loved it and uh, I couldn't do anything else and I was desperate and I took a shot and I fell in love with it and the rest is history. You know, you only got one life. You might as well try and fail at something you enjoy doing and see where the world can take you and comedy i hate to sound like a cliche douche but it kind of saved my life and you're always working on podcasts you could say you're a podcast queen and how do you always come up with content and always come up with things to say <laughs> uh, i think you just gotta go with it you gotta go with your gut and you gotta stop filtering i think we've all kind of done that thing where we're like oh i shouldn't say this it's dumb but ah, screw it just say it and see where it goes Every sentence can lead to another sentence. You just take a little nugget out of this, a little nugget out of that, and and run on, run on sentence. You know, just take it and run with it. Just run with it. That's some good advice. And with the pandemic happening, you did run with it. You made Corona comedy. You made Park Norman, Park L Lot Norman, and you just kept on going with it. What drived you to do that and what gave you yeah. that inspiration to just go with it? Wow. Hey, good, good questions there, sister. You did your homework. Uh, I think, well, I'm a guy, if the treadmill is not on, I won't run. So I, I'm real lazy and I can really just slip into, you know, an abyss of jizz and Netflix. So I have to like force myself to get up and move and go and make stuff and I feel like it was really easy to just slip in that hot tub, that pandemic hot tub and just go, ah, fuck it. I'm going to eat cheese and, you know, jerk off all day. But I said, no, let's, let's actually use this time. We got all the time in the world. Shows are canceled. Everybody's just sitting around. So let's go to the park and let's film it. And these are all crazy times. Like we're going to look back on this and go, man, 2020, that was wild. Huh? I blew my uncle. I, I, I uh, just ate a bunch of acid and ate, ate ass. But uh, I think let's let's uh, capture it. We got video, we got time, we got a little money to spend. Let's film us on a on a roof or in a park or in fucking Central Park where I'm swimming in the uh, the pond. Fuck it, let's let's film it. This is interesting. That's awesome. Just doing it, and a lot of your content is digital. And would you consider yourself a YouTuber? Ah, I, I never thought of it. Nah, I think a YouTuber is some guy who unboxes things and he's uh, got 8 trillion followers. And, you know, like like Casey Neistat is a YouTuber. He's like a vlog guy. I just try to film funny shit and I put it on YouTube because the networks are a bunch of queefs and they're all a bunch of gatekeepers and they won't put me on TV. So fuck it, I'll do it myself. So I guess I am a YouTuber, but I wouldn't say I'm a YouTube star or anything or a YouTube You're not a comedian YouTube sensation, but a YouTuber nonetheless. Yeah. I can relate to that. <laughs> yes. Say well said. Yeah. <laughs> and your comedy, you know, it does push some boundaries and it does go against PC culture. And what, what drives you to keep on making comedy that goes against social norms? Oh, wow. Well, I think social norms are not always right. Just because they're the norm doesn't mean it's, it's, it's it's correct uh even though it's called politically correct um like all my uh all my black friends are like that ah, just call me black don't call me african-american that's weird so sure that might be the norm and that might be the the politically correct way to do it but i don't know who who decided this do we check in with everybody who who makes these rules and why do we just go with them so i just try to be you know polite and respectful and honest 
you know, all my jokes, I try to keep them honest. And I think that's what resonates, you know. Sure, society says do this, do that, but just because they say that, who who picked who picked that? What the hell? There's some guy up in a in a ivory tower with a big quill pen going, "This shall be the 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 new norm," and just you know write it down and send it off on a pigeon, and then we all got to read it and go with it. Fuck that. I don't know. You listen, you learn, you you keep your head down and an ear to the ground and. I feel like you can get the real truth that way. Yeah, and I feel like drag culture used to be a lot like pushing against the norms, but now it's a lot of conforming since it has become so mainstream. And how do you think drag queens could bring yes. the crudeness to drag? I think you guys were the ultimate uh, pushing the boundary. You guys were awesome, and everybody let it slide because, you know, you, what you're doing is so fun and it's you're in a dress and it's progressive and it's bending gender norms and all that stuff. So I say, you guys just keep going. See, that's the problem is we all, you know, what's a RuPaul and then the drag race, like it kind of put you guys into the spotlight and the same with comedy. Comedy was a fucking downstairs basement dwelling, degenerate men and women saying crazy, honest shit that you kind of weren't supposed to say. I mean, look at George Carlin, piss, fuck, motherfucker, and tits, and uh, Richard Pryor is saying the N-word every 10 seconds. So that was, uh, that was what it was supposed to be. It's like punk rock, you know? And I think drag culture was the same way. You guys were really niche, really backroom kind of underground shit, and that's what was fun about it. So I say don't, don't go into this. If they, if they can't handle you guys being you, fuck them. They're not a fan anyway. Exactly. And, and how would you suggest to deal with backlash on how do you deal with it? Do you just ignore it? I mean, look, I'm a sensitive queef like the rest of us, and it hurts my feelings sometimes. And it's so ironic cause be, because I feel like a lot of these people who are, you know, trying to be uh, politically correct and social justice, they're actually some of the meanest, worst people deep down. And they use the PC-ness as some kind of cloak of like uh, of moral superiority even though they're trying to ruin your life or saying horrible things like just because you disagree with my joke or your joke doesn't give you carte blanche to call me a piece of shit and try to ruin my life and take away my livelihood isn't that way more damaging than somebody who's made a gay joke or whatever it is so also if you, you try to cancel a, a comic there's people out there who love that person and you're taking that joy away from them now because this person can't work. So I've noticed a lot of these uh, cancelers are actually worse people deep down. Uh, so I think just keep going and keep pushing. And I, I hope eventually the cancelers will get canceled. Yeah. And actually cancel culture, I feel like is even evolving because they're like, Oh, we're not canceling anybody anymore. We're holding people accountable. Right, right. And and look, hold people accountable, whatever. But like, again, we're artists. You're an artist. I mean, it's a it's a douchey term and I sound pretentious and, and dumb. But look, Quentin Tarantino made Pulp Fiction. It's a, an amazing movie. It changed the game. Brilliant movie. And look, a guy gets raped in a dungeon by a gimp. And does that mean he's promoting rape or pro rape or whatever the hell like? No, and if we, if you do a joke or if I do a, a joke that's off off color, I'm I'm just re- making a joke. I'm a comedian. That's what we do. And you're a, you're a drag queen. That's what you do. You fuck around. So I don't know. It's just weird that like in the annals of history or the annals, like you hear about Lenny Bruce or you hear about all these people who get offended. Why would you want to be on the 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 dweeb side of it? You know, like. I don't know. I, I you hear about Lenny Bruce, these people like get him off stage. He's offensive. Like you really want to be on in that group, the the you know hall monitor, ruin the fun group. Ah, it's just crazy. I, I get that. And in and in your art comedy, um, gay baiting is a typical joke. And what do you think makes gay culture so funny? <laughs> well, what is gay baiting? I don't know that term. Gay baiting is like when you go, I'm gay and like, I think you're hot. Just like, so like maybe gay people would be interested in what you're saying. Oh, oh, interesting. I like that. I've never heard that. Um, Yeah, I think gay culture is so funny because gay guys 
more more men than women are 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 tend to be flamboyant and fun and fun loving and gay guys have this uh great way of kind of cutting you down but in a playful way and they've mastered it all my gay friends they can really zing me and still look cute you know i zing somebody i look like a dick they zing me and it's like it's kind of adorable and and playful and fun and uh gay guys are just great at that they're they're the best at that yeah i get it it's almost a defense mechanism and i see in your jokes a lot of the time the cis white man is not a lot of the time a butt of your joke but what would you say your opinion is on the cis white man because i heard you have some (laughs) well the only reason i I don't make them the butt of the joke is because everyone else does so i'm trying to be a little more original a little more different everybody every tom dick and queefy has the uh uh the cis white guy is evil straight white man whatever and, you know, it's the same with Trump. Like, Trump's a psycho, but I don't make fun of him because it's everyone else is doing it. So I'd rather stand out a little bit and be original. But, uh, yeah, I think the cis white man is just like any other group. There's some good, there's some bad. Uh, we're kind of taking it on the chin now because we were so evil before. But but then you got the whole thing of, like, like you know, police will pull over a black guy because they fit the description. And that's fucked up, you know? This guy didn't do anything but he fits the description, so we pulled you over. That's, ho- that's horrible. So I don't get why people do that to straight white men. Yeah, I fit the description, but I didn't do anything wrong. So why would you do that to me? And it's just kind of ignorant and, you know, to say all gay people are dumb or all black people are evil or all women are stupid, whatever. I think, I thought we were trying to go against that, that generaliz- generalizing and uh, lumping people together just based on the color of their skin, their sexual orientation, or their gender. So I just try to, I have my own uh, theories and I try to play by my theories and try to have some integrity. Yeah, completely make it work for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Like every group's got fuck ups and every group's got great people. You know, people like to shit on billionaires. Billionaires are, millionaires are evil. You're like, well, some are and some aren't. Some have given back so much money that they've saved many lives. Uh, And same with poor people. Just because they're a victim doesn't mean they're all great. You know, some poor people are evil and some poor people are great. We love to just generalize. And and I thought we were trying to get a a go against that. You know, that's what progress is, is treating people like individuals and not judging people based on, you know, outside whatever. So I don't know. I even like the Karen stuff. She's a Karen. I get it. It's funny. But don't you see the irony? You're just kind of lumping another group together. And now that's a slur and you're saying a slur towards them. So it's all very strange. And do you really think Karen is a slur? <laughs> I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't care about anything. I, I'm a honky cracker, white devil, uh, you know, uh, pasty face ghost guy. So I don't care. I'm not offended or bothered by any of it. I just think it's ironic that people will say, hey, don't say that about this group, but she's a Karen. So you're like, well, which one is it? You're just doing that thing you tell them not to do to her. And that's somehow because it's new or because she's a white lady, it's, it's somehow okay now. I, I don't know. It's just like, if you're going to make these rules, you got to stick by them. I don't make any rules, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. And yeah, you don't follow any rules. I like that. But do, Netflix doesn't seem to like it. Do you see yourself <laughs> on Netflix in the future? Maybe one day. I mean, Netflix is a bunch of, there's a, they're a bunch of businessmen, you know, they're a bunch of suits who are going, oh, this is the way the tide is going. All right, we'll do that. We don't want any pushback. We don't want any blowback. So we'll go, we'll go the right way. And I think eventually when the tide swings another way, they'll just go that way. They're just trying to sell tickets and get numbers. And I get it. It's, it's a business. So hopefully I'll be on there one day, but, uh, you know, things are going pretty well. I'm selling tickets. I'm getting some good numbers on the on the special on YouTube. So maybe we won't need them in the future. You know, you could be a, you could be the next big thing just based off TikTok or Instagram or Grinder or Pornhub, whatever the hell it is. Yeah, and you're working and you're handling your own business. And where do you want to take your comedy in the future? Uh, well, I, geez, I'd like to have. Uh, an original take. I'd like to have my own spin. I'd like to have real fans who, when something in the world happens, they go, I want to hear what Mark says about that. You know, I just want to be a respected comic who's 
well known amongst the comedy world you know uh, i feel like right now you got your Chappelle's and your bill burrs and uh all these guys and seinfelds and whoever so i'd like to be amongst that group one day not now i got i got a lot of work to do but that's all i want is just to be a comic who gives a shit who takes pride in his work who tries to be funny and original and uh i hope people enjoy it and would you do sketch comedy or a sitcom sure i'll do anything i'm a real uh, stage whore but i'm not a great actor and sketch comedy is so uh it's so flimsy it's rarely good every now and then you get a brilliant sketch don't get me wrong but i feel like there's so much more bad than good with comedy sketch comedy so uh i'm not huge into it i've had a few sketch ideas that i i should have probably filmed but it doesn't grab me like stand-up is so in your face and right there and you get that instant reaction uh, i'm not a huge sketch guy i get it i like it when it's good but it's like improv it's, there's a lot of bad and some good. And with all the movements going on, where do you see the future of comedy going? I think it's, uh, I think, and I'm, this is mostly wishful thinking, I think it's going to kind of come back because we, we had a real, like, woke moment where, you know, it was all about activism and saving people and helping people or whatever, quote, unquote. But I think people are starting to want that kind of raw, edgy, and I hate the term edgy, but that kind of that raw, just silly, fucked up comedy. And look, there's always going to be people against it, but that's that's just the breaks. There, were, there was people out in the streets in the 50s going, we got to stop Elvis. Like, why? What do he do? He's gyrating his hips. <laughs> like, why would you want to be that person? It's just the new version of that. But uh, I think comedy is going to come back in that that dark kind of clubby, uh, filthy, degenerate fashion and then eventually that'll go away again that will be a new thing it's like rock and roll you got grunge then you got hair metal then you got disco then back to hair metal then grunge then cold play then fucking green day it just keeps you know it's ebbs and flows just like any other art yeah well i'm excited to see where it goes well mark it's been a pleasure talking to you um is there anything um we didn't get to talk about that you want to talk about I'd like to hear more about you. I mean, I feel like I hogged the spotlight. What's what's the drag world like? Are you bummed about how how PC it's getting or whatever or how? I'm actually going to do a Corona show myself. Um, All right. But I'm not honestly too bummed. I've been wanting to move over to digital media for a while. So like I started that at the beginning of the year and then that this fell into place. So it's working out. I can't right. complain at all. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Well done. And but anytime we, you want to like talk about me, definitely talk about me on your podcast, Joe Rogan's podcast, whoever's podcast. <laughs> you on. got it. What, <laughs> what's the, give me the full name and the full website and all that good stuff. Well, you can find me on Instagram at Bayla Stray and on YouTube at Bayla Stray. Bayla Stray. Got it. All right. Can I, is it, would it offend you if I rubbed one out to you? Not at all. You can do it right all now right. at the park. I'm oh. sure no one would mind. <laughs> all right. Let me, uh, I look around, I see a few kids, so that's probably why I'm hard. But uh, all right, good stuff, man. I, uh, or what, what, what do, I, do you like a gender pronoun? Or uh, you know what? Work? I'm not a stickler on it. I've met a few people that are call me him, her. It doesn't right. really matter. I agree. We're all gonna die one day. We're on Earth for one little blip. Let's try to enjoy it, folks. Let's not get hung up on these silly words. And I look, if it means a lot to you, I'll do it. And I am not against it, but. Uh, I don't know. Life's too short. If you, if you call me Mike, I won't even correct you. So I'd be a Mike, horrible trans person. Mike Norman. Yeah, I get that all the time. I go, hey, what are you going to do? Who gives a shit? <laughs> let's, uh, let's try to have fun. All right, Mark. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm Kevin Hart, and you have yourself a great night. <laughs> all right. Take care, man. Take it easy, and praise Allah.